Product rule and quotient rule. Here's the formulas. Officially, the formula says, take the derivative, let me put it in a beautiful rainbow box, d over dx, who is keep talking? Thank you. d over dx means derivative f times g, that's a product, and that's why it's called product rule, f times g. You want to differentiate the product. Well, you multiply not derivative by derivative, not derivative by derivative. You basically switch uh, between which one is going on. Order doesn't matter here. Just make sure both all, both couples have one derivative, one not derivative. In the quotient rule, order matters because there is a negative sign in the numerator. So I usually start with differentiating the numerator. In this formula, they do not do that, but it's fine. doesn't matter. So quotient rule called quotient, guess why? Because there's a fraction. And then you do not derivative derivative minus not derivative derivative, but now it matters which one goes first because of the negative sign. So negative sign will mess up lots of formulas. So I would start with differentiating the top. And then you square the denominator and just leave it as it is. Don't be bothered by that. This is not how I usually teach those formulas. So finish writing them down. And I will show you how I teach it. I always see students from my classes because they have this notation. And again, you don't have to remember my notation. Mine is just faster. So u times v, that's the most uh, fast way to write it down. u times v <coughs> prime, that's product rule. u times v prime gives you derivative not derivative plus, not derivative, derivative, in any order you like. So that's a faster way to remember the formula. While, let me leave it. Oh, yeah, I, I knew it's going to happen. But let's uh, watch the cute animation I have it for quotient rule or product rule or both. It looks like this. I post it in the announcement. Yeah, actually, I have both announcements here. Nope. And they have a nice um, animation for each case. Also, please read my kind of semi-angry announcement about getting behind. Uh, you're not supposed to get behind. <laughs> if you did, that's fine, but catch up. Here's the both formulas. Look how beautiful the animation is. <clears throat> I like animations. So derivative, not derivative. And then plus or minus derivative, not derivative. So the numerator looks alike with the product rule, but there is a negative sign though. So maybe these animations will help you to remember it better. You can always find them in the announcement. And then my quotient rule, I just wanted to move this. My quotient rule notation is u over v prime, prime means derivative equals start with squaring the denominator and forget about it. So that's my highly recommended step is to just square the denominator and forget about it. Because many people, A, forget about the denominator or start simplifying it, distributing it, don't do that. And then you start with differentiating the top, then you will not mess up. If you're differentiating the top, which is numerator, then you're correct. U prime V minus U V prime. Derivative of the top copy the bottom minus copy the top derivative of the bottom. That's my two nice fast notation. And I call one product rule, PR, product rule, and the other one is quotient rule, QR. That's American notation. Usually people know that in, in this country. Not too bad. What do you think about this? Did you finish copying? <laughs> now we're just going to do like one thousandth of examples, and then you go home and do two thousandths examples. That's, that's how it works. You just do a lot. So let's do lots of examples. People who've seen this before, again, let other people uh, enjoy a little bit more the new material. For example, if f of x is x to the 9 <coughs> times sine x, find f prime of x. So starting this material, we start preparing for the mastery exam. Mastery exam starts with product rule, 
quotient rule, power rule, then, then everything else. So you probably, you might see this problem on the master exam again, and then final exam again. So the earlier you learn it, the better it is for everyone. While I was talking, did you recognize the product? Step one, see the product. Oh, I see the product, okay. So it's gonna be U and it's gonna be V. And then it is not derivative of U times derivative of V. So that's a common mistake. People just differentiate it as the way they see it. Yeah, that's not correct. So you cannot just write down, let me write down one more time. You cannot write down derivative of x to the 9 is 9x to the 8 times derivative of sine is cosine. That is not correct. <coughs> so you cannot break it just in derivative times derivative. That's why it's called rule. So no, don't do that. That's going to be a popular mistake. Instead, you use, let me put in blue, use product rule. And product rule says, yeah, that's not that simple. There's a derivation of the product rule. You can actually check it out using limits. They use limits to do that. So f prime of x will be u prime v plus v u prime. Derivative, not derivative, not derivative, derivative. Any way you like, just remember that u prime if u is x to the 9 so then derivative of u is 9x to the 8 i will write down below this is in the light blue u prime times copy v i know how to copy that's not very hard i will copy sign plus <coughs> Formula says, now <coughs> copy u, differentiate v. Okay, I can do that too. Copy u. u is x to the 9. Differentiate sine gives you cosine. And that is the answer. You can leave it as it is. Don't have to simplify it. Type it in your homework. Choose multiple choice question on the exam and so on. So let me put it in the box and tell you a couple of comments. Some students, when they just start learning this topic, it's a little bit confusing of what's happening. So what they do, they write it down. U is x to the 9. V is sine x. U times V has a formula called product rule. U times V prime is U prime V plus U V prime. And then they follow this beautiful table to fill in the formula, like this, to complete the formula. If u is x to the 9 and v is sine x, you finish the formula. And that's what I did. You can do that, but it kind of slows you down. Usually, if you're really good in taking derivatives, you don't need to write them down in front of you anymore. You see them in your mind, like a born <laughs> naturally born mathematician. So you see things. <laughs> It's, I always make a joke from the Matrix movie, like a Neo, just sees the numbers floating down. At some point, I'm not joking actually, at some point you see things in the air when you're in STEM major for too long. And that means you write less stuff. So it speeds you up. What do you think about this? <coughs> Let's do one more. Let's do with something students struggle in the exam, I noticed that, step example two, radicals and that kind of stuff, minus 7x cube, 7x minus 7x cube times 6 plus square root of x. And I want to take derivative of that, so let me write down, f equals, f prime equals, You've seen it in your homework already before, but we did not do, uh, we did not know product rule before. So how did you do it in 2.3? <coughs> do you remember? You've seen it before. Just you just multiply. American students call it FOIL. Um, nobody else knows what FOIL is except local people. <coughs> but uh, it's actually called distribution. <laughs> um, even American teachers now don't like FOIL anymore because uh, it's distribution. 
you distribute things, and then you use power rule. You simplify 7x cubed times square root of x is x or some kind of power. And then you use power rule. <coughs> but it might be faster not to do that. It might be faster to see it as u and v. And either you write it down separately. Let me do it once. u is 7x minus 7x cubed. v is 6 plus square root of x. And you write it down like so. And now you proceed with the product rule formula. Product rule. The product rule says derivative, not derivative, plus not derivative, derivative. Any order you like, just make sure you just do the order. I like starting with u prime in both of my formulas. So in product rule, I start with u prime. And in quotient rule, I start with u prime. This consistency actually eliminates mistakes. So I like it. Start with taking derivative of the first term. I highly recommend doing that. So I know it's going to be derivative, not derivative, plus not derivative, derivative. Product rule. U prime. You look at u and you take derivative of u. 7x gives you 7. Minus 7x cubed gives you minus 21x squared. Do you all agree on that? That was exam one, so I hope you're good with that. Copy V, copy. Derivative, copy, then copy, derivative. Copy V, oh, that's easy, I can do that. Six plus square root of X, just copy that. Then you copy U, because you already differentiated, so there's no reason to do it again. You copy U, that's the best part of this. And then you differentiate V, U, v prime v prime is derivative of six plus square root of x uh, we recommend you to especially at the beginner level to rewrite it as six plus x to the what power one half derivative of six is nothing. well nothing zero yeah zero and then derivative of x to the one half is one half x to the negative one half i heard you very good and leave it as it is. Nobody cares about simplifying. If it's multiple choice, they probably simplify it a little bit. I never do. On my exams, I just leave it like this. It looks ugly, but we just need to know that you know how to use the formula. I don't <coughs> need to know that you know how to simplify things. That was done in pre-algebra, pre pre-calculus, and so on. So this is a good answer. Type it in the web work, and you're good to go. <coughs> the annoying part will be typing it in, but it is what it is. <laughs> no, okay, that's not good. Let's try again. It is what it is. It is what it is. Oh, yeah, thank you. you see? My previous semester class was much louder. They would like the whole class would say that. That's very nice. Ask me before I move on. This is a new material, so it's not supposed to be super easy. It's new, it's confusing, it's weird, you're sleepy, everyone wants to go home. What do you think about this? Thumbs up if you feel like, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, the first rows, they kind of like, you see the first five rows are doing very active job. How about people at the back? Are you doing fine? Oh, nice, thank you. Okay, good, 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 yeah. Now let's do quotient rule, that's the annoying one. Three, f of x equals, and you can, while I'm writing this down, six minus x squared over four, plus x to the 5. While you're writing this down, you can think it's super boring. Why are we doing this? Well, you don't have no idea how much uh, rocket science, which is literally what NASA is doing, mi microbiology, using all of this on a daily basis. You see derivatives and derivatives and derivatives everywhere, and they have protocol, quotient rule, chain rule every day. And for them, it's already alphabet. It's basic. They don't question this because you do double, triple, derivatives and integration, and that's already such a higher level that you know this very well. So your job is to figure this out in this class and then go to higher material after this. Higher, harder material, yes, upper level material. U over V, and you can write down if you want what your U is. I kind of don't recommend doing this, but you can do it if you want. I will stop doing it probably in the next example already. Because when I rewrite them, can't I just like look at this? This is top, this is bottom. So why are you rewriting it? But I guess if you want to, I don't mind. U and V, 
quotient rule. Q R quotient means division, right? Quotient in English means division. So we're dividing things. The formula says. So I highly recommend to do the way I teach it, just because it saves so many saves you from mistakes. Square the denominator and forget about it. So let's do it right away. Just don't be bothered with denominator. F prime equals, I put huge fraction, 4 plus x to the 5 squared. And I will not touch it. This is like the best part. Just leave it alone. Don't have to think about too much. So that's good. And now you will not forget it because you start with it. You start with the easy part. And now the top. The top start with differentiating u. Start with differentiating the top. 6 minus x squared gives you the prime, the derivative of 6 minus 6 minus x squared gives you minus 2x. That is u prime. <coughs> Copy v. Okay, I can do that. v is denominator. So in this case, you have the top and the bottom. I was criticized by a professor calling it top and the bottom. You should be professional, Julia. It's called numerator denominator. Well, that's why now I'm mentioning both. I do professional and then the fast one. English is hard. Do you know how long it is to write denominator? You know, you're writing it too. It's top and the bottom. It's the best part. Why need to be so specific every time? <clears throat> so copy V, we did that. And now you do minus. That's going to be a popular mistake. Try to remember why it's so important. There's a minus here. If you mess up minus, uh, the answer would be wrong. Actually, the answer will be correct, but negative. Well, so change the sign at the end, and you get back to correct the answer. Uh, no, I'm wrong. If the order is wrong, you can change the sign. But if you put plus, everything is wrong. So we copy it. We copy v minus copy u derivative of v, like so. So I'm copying in in blue parentheses. I'm copying u, 6 minus x squared. And finally, at the end, I'm differentiating v denominator. 4 plus x to the 5 gives you 5x to the 4. <coughs> Amazing. So let me write it down. U, time, u prime v minus u v prime. Oh, no, the colors are not good. u prime v u v prime over v squared. That's it. Leave it as it is. You will be asked to simplify at some point, uh, which is, in this case, distribute. Some <coughs> terms will cancel out, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. You can leave it as it is. Uh, if it's written part of the exam, I don't mind. But in my notes, actually, you can see how I distributed everything. Something got simplified. And if you want to know, equals la 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 algebra it's in my notes so you can definitely check it out and apparently the answer looks like 3x to the 6 minus 30x to the 4 minus 8x minus 8x all over and again don't touch the denominator it's 4 plus x to the 5 squared. I don't need answer like this. I need to see that you know how to use the formula. So the previous answer is <coughs> good. Algebra is algebra. I know you're messing up algebra sometimes, which is fine. Um, I don't punish hard. Some people lost a negative sign. Some people copied the problem wrong. I took one point, sometimes two if it was important. One point was not important out of 20. So I'm very good when it comes to algebra. I don't really mind of small mistakes. But I see how you're doing tangent line, then good. This is almost maximum minus one. So some people got 99 because they lost a negative sign. So it's kind of funny. Questions about this? You will be upset to find out that even in calculus three, triple integrals, you'll be so good at this and you're still going to lose a negative sign. It's the algebra mistakes always follow you. It's just uh, very upsetting. <coughs> the brain gets very good at hard stuff, and then you lose a negative sign. And you're like, wow. Some people in calculus three class, multiple valuable calculus, amazingly strong STEM people, still going to give me 10 over 2 equals 3. 
Why? Nobody knows. And then we all know, it's just like the brain glitches sometimes. Triple integral, easy, but 10 over five glitched. So somehow that's just the case. Don't be too harsh on yourself for that. Four, let's do some of your homework problems because some of them like, eh, a little bit too much work. So this is homework problem. I think it's number 10, unless it got renumerated. In my note, it says number 10. 4x squared times tangent x, ew, over secant x. Did you see this? Yeah, so my online students taking exam tomorrow and they have this on the test. I just looked it up. That's, uh, it's hard. So you need to know derivatives of stuff. But do we, <coughs> did I give you derivative of tangent and secant? I actually did but I'm gonna review it again right now. Sooner or later, you'll have to memorize it, so it's fine. So before we move on, let's review. Derivative of sine gives you cosine. Derivative of cosine gives you sine, but negative. You need to know these two. You need to know, you need to know them really well. And then tangent and secant, just a second, tangent and secant. Tangent and secant also give each other, just like sine and cosine, but a little bit in a weird way. Tangent adores secant, so it gives you secant squared. Secant likes itself, so it gives you secant x and then tangent. That's the funny way to remember it. Yes. Yeah? Uh, secant is one over cosine. Oh yeah, let's review that, thank you. So, uh, couldn't you just do one over cosine Ooh. derivative of that. You're ready to simplify. Yes, let's do that. I'm gonna do that too. I like it. Let's review that. Not everyone know because not all countries have cosecant and secant x. Prime prime. It's one over cos and one over a sine, but which one is which? Super annoying. I had to learn it when I was teaching. So what my student one of my students told me, if it starts with S it will be C, 1 over cosine. C, S goes, becomes C. But if it starts with C, then it's going to be 1 over sine. Genius. <coughs> Genius. Because again, many countries don't even have those functions. But in America, they not only have these two functions, they are pushing it really hard in all the exams. So that's kind of the idea. So, there are two ways or more to figure out a derivative solution. F prime equals the way one was just mentioned. Why not just to simplify? Secant and tangent can be simplified. In general, if you see secant and tangent, write down the definitions. Maybe they will cancel each other out and make it easier. Yes? And also, isn't tangent just one side of sine over cosine over cosine over sine? But I don't remember which one it is. So can you just do and then take the derivative of that. Yeah, so we're gonna do that. That's a second way of doing it. Oh, let me review tangent. Tangent x always starts with the normal guy, and normal one is sine. Awesome. And I never memorized cotangent because it's just opposite of tangent, so one over tangent. So you simplify everything if you want to, and we're gonna do it as a step two, uh, way two. Way one, let's practice the formula. Way one, you will have to have a lot of space, so just letting you know. Equals, yes. Way one is to recognize quotient rule, because it is a quotient. Square denominator, secant x, and now we're just gonna put it squared, and forget about it. And that's the good part of it, that denominator gets squared, and you forget about it. quotient rule. So we're gonna do quotient rule. And now you differentiate the top. The problem is that the top is a product rule. So there's a product rule integrated in the quotient rule. This is u times v in the product rule itself. So we're gonna be careful. It's fine, it's fine. It says differentiate the top, right? So I'm gonna put parentheses and I will do top derivative, right? So I know we need to differentiate 4x squared times tangent, but 4x squared times tangent is itself product rule. So 
derivative of 4x squared copy tangent plus copy 4x squared derivative of tangent and that is going to be the derivative <coughs> of u prime so this u prime in the quotient rule and then you copy the denominator so let's do it slowly i think i have a good video on this problem too just in case you need it so quotient rule says let's differentiate the top of the fraction here it is oh i will make it uh, like this that's nice oh very good idea product rule says differentiate 4x squared derivative of 4x squared is 8x good copy tangent copy and i will color code it i'm copying tangent plus copy 4x squared because we're differentiate so you don't have to differentiate one more time 4x squared times derivative of whatever we did not differentiate yet that is tangent derivative of tangent is secant squared that is just u prime in the quotient rule derivative of the top then the formula says let me go back to this pretty one <coughs> if you want to have a pretty one here it is we just did this part copy the denominator then minus copy the numerator differentiated denominator continue the copy part is the best part because i don't mind just copying stuff even if it's long at least i know how to copy so it says copy the denominator i can put it in different color for you it's like this one yeah kind of ugly though but it's fine copy the denominator that is secant let me put it in black secant x that's just copy minus okay keep going keep going <laughs> keep going <laughs> minus it's not gonna be that long because we're almost done then it says copy the numerator i can do that 4x squared 4x squared times tangent x i just copy that oh the podium yeah times times i feel very important when i do that the derivative of the denominator what's the derivative of the denominator no derivative of secant secant likes itself so secant x copies itself and then it's times tangent x like so that is the answer let me write down that this was bottom prime or you have let me show you with hands i guess hands are good u prime that's the derivative of the top in yellow copy denominator d minus minus is important copy u numerator derivative of the v denominator so in some point it sounds hard but actually it's derivative not derivative not derivative derivative just order matter so i always start with <coughs> differentiating the top and then you square in the denominator and just leave it out you can simplify it but i don't want to and you don't want to either so whatever again that's a, that's a good decent answer just have to be very careful how you um type it in does that make sense what we just did lots of tricks how fun is that how fun is this trigonometric functions the best thing ever see how big it is look at this way two is actually better the one you mentioned way two if you see trigonometric functions and you stuck with them and they are not sine and cosine maybe write down the definitions and maybe it will simplify nicely so i will not take derivative yet i will just write down f f was 4x squared tangent x all over secant x equals maybe they will cancel out i don't know let's see 
tangent is sine x over cosine x from the right triangle. Secant is 1 over, it was c, so it will be, it was s, so it will be c, cosine x, or from the right triangle. <coughs> Equals division by fraction, you will have 4x squared sine over cosine sine x over cosine x goes like that and then dividing by a fraction means multiplying by the reciprocal so i can flip it and have so this one will be the denominator and then cosine x cosine x goes to the numerator does it make sense flipping when you divide by a fraction look at that cancel out Yes. So it's just protocol after all. We don't have we did not have to do such complicated stuff if you simplify. So in this case, but to be honest, we want you to know both. Uh, we need to be good at both. So that's kind of upsetting. 4x squared sine x. Simplified version. Then f prime will be and now I can definitely recognize it's a product of two functions, 4x squared and sine x. u times v, it's a product rule. Product rule, pr. pr gives you derivative, not derivative, plus not derivative, derivative. 4x squared is 8x copy sine x plus copy 4x squared times derivative of sine. That is the answer. The answer is the same if you simplify the first answer. <coughs> so that's how it's going to be. Apparently, if you simplify, that's how it looks like. Product rule instead of quotient rule with product rule in it. What do you think about that? Isn't it nice? If we ask you, note, find slope of a tangent line at five, five seconds, for example. Do you know what to do? You plug five into your derivative. Just like, it's nothing new, it's not a new material, but I just want to make sure people know. If I plug five into the derivative I just have, it's gonna be eight times five, which is 40. Sine of five, do you know what sine of five is? It's sine of five. You do not need to Google calculate or anything. It's a number. Sine of the angle is some kind of number, 0 0.13 or whatever, just leave it alone. I can see people sometimes overthinking this. 100, do you know how I got 100? 5 squared, 25 times 4, right? And then cosine of 5. Same thing, just leave it alone. Cosine of 5. You know cosine of 1? That's also a number. Just leave it alone. Don't mess up with numbers. That is the answer. What do you think about this? So in general, um, I will show you more homework examples. But like I mentioned before, with just like with the push-ups, I can do lots of push-ups in front of you, and you will not get stronger from that, from watching me doing push-ups. At some point, you go home and you do your own push-ups. My job is just to show you how to do it correctly. <coughs> so let me do this. Um, let me ask first if you have questions. What do you think about this? That's going to be one of your favorite homeworks, ironically, because it kind of gets harder after that. 2.4, 18 problems, <coughs> and let me, I can show you, uh, this is what your homework looks like. X squared times cosine, there's nothing new, you just perform product rule. 4 over 4x, oh, let's do this one. Nothing new, it's quotient rule. Product rule. That's not any product rule or quotient rule, but okay, why not? Product rule, so quotient rule. It's a very classical homework. There's no surprises in it. 
You just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. This is the one I just did, number 10. Oh, it is number 10. And so on. This one, you can do it as a quotient rule or like you did in 2.3. Break it into three fractions. So let me do, I just saw this one, number two. Sometimes the easy ones uh, threw students off and they stuck with the easy ones. Append it's number two in your homework. I will name it number five here. Number five says, let's take derivative of four over eight x plus two equals prime. So instead of writing f and f prime, it's actually faster to write it this way. Let's do this. There are two ways of doing it again. Two ways of doing it. Let's do quotient rule first and then compare if there's a better way of doing it. Quotient rule says, I see a quotient, u over v. You can even write down that u is 4 and v is 8x plus 2. I will square the denominator right away. Here it is. It's squared. And forget about it. You're good. Don't touch it. And now the, the fun starts right now. Derivative of the top. That's derivative of 4, which is? Zero. Copy the bottom. At this point, I will just ditch the whole term, to be honest. But for the good notes, I'll write it down. When I'm taking derivative and there's something there is zero, you just ditch the whole thing and move on to the next term. Minus. So let me see. Let me write down for you in red. U prime V. Derivative copy. Minus. Now you copy numerator. That's four times derivative of the denominator. What is that? Eight. Derivative of eight x plus two. Let me keep writing. U times V prime. And that is V squared. That is the answer. It's too much <coughs> typing. So I would simplify it as zero times stuff is zero. So I have minus 32, eight times four, right? divided by 8x plus 2 squared. Leave it like this. Don't do anything with the denominator. This is a nice factored form. It's beautiful. It's amazing. Does that make sense? But I would not do it this way. And the way of doing it differently, we're going to learn in on Monday. So <laughs> again, there are so many different creative ways of doing derivatives. So for now, this is how you do it. Don't be scared if you have a zero at some point somewhere. What do you think about this? Yeah, the chain rule gonna go on Monday, exactly. And we're gonna do that. Let's do one more. That is number, this one I know you guys are gonna stuck, but I think I have video on this one. It's number 17. Five. Number six. It's from your homework. Check it out. Capital F equals mu. Do you know mu? That's that's how you write it down. <coughs> mu. M-U. Greek mu. Huh? Greek notation. Yeah, Greek notation. Yeah. Mu. That's the cute one. Times, okay, whatever. Times W over mu sine t plus cosine t. People are like, wow, what is that? Well, I can tell you what is that. It says the object has a weight w. It's dragged along a horizontal plane, so I'm dragging something, by a force acting along a rope attached to the object. If the rope makes an angle t, okay, so I'm dragging something from the, on the floor, so my cat doesn't want to go to the vet, right? And I'm dragging the cat. And now there's an angle between me and the cat. The angle is t. Usually it's theta. I don't know why they chose t, but okay. Then the magnitude of the force. What is magnitude of the force? Uh, there's How would you explain mathematically? Find. Oh, um, I would say the magnitude of the force. Magnitude of the force is F. That means it's a derivative of force. This is in front of you is derivative of force. It's given. 
which means we differentiated the force. So I'm strong and I'm dragging the cat, right? How, how much the force is changing while I'm dragging the cat? That is magnitude. Hmm. I guess actually no. In this case, magnitude is how, how much force, yes. How much force I'm uh, using to drag the cat. The strings. Oh, that's a good synonym. Should have just said that. Strings. Strings is a good synonym. Magnitude. And we're going to learn magnitude in the vector calculus again. That's the magnitude or the strength of the force I'm using. Mu is a constant called coefficients of friction. Okay, the cat definitely has a friction with the floor, with all these claws. And then they ask you to find the rate of change. And I already told you the synonyms. Find the rate of change. Rate of change means what? Derivative. So you don't, you don't uh, hesitate. Find f prime. If, and then the, the thing is like, I don't know, there's so many letters. What is the variable here? What is the constant? Well, they actually give us. W is given as 35 pounds. That's how heavy my cat is. Oh, okay, sure. That's a dog, I guess. And then mu is given. That's the friction with the floor, for example. It's a constant. Okay, now I know. So I can rewrite it as solution. I can see capital F as a function that depends on T. T is the angle between me and the floor or an object. Mu is 0 0.5 times W is 35. Mu is 0 0.5 sine t plus cosine t. Can you take derivative of this? It's kind of what we just did in number two uh, with a constant and the top. And also it has a unit. Does anyone know what units do we have here? So it's pounds, 0 0.5 is a constant 35 pounds, right? So it's pounds over, and T is in, they don't actually don't say in degrees, I guess, because it's an angle. Maybe degrees. Don't ask me, I'm not a physicist. So you're supposed to know uh, the all the little things, like the units. F prime will be, and you repeat the whole process we just did. Let me see if we can do it faster. 0 0.5 sine t plus cosine t. What am I doing with this when I'm taking derivative? Squaring, leave it alone. And then it says differentiate the top, which gives you zero. <laughs> so I don't like, I don't, I just keep it a zero, maybe even not, and put minus. Minus part of the formula. Let me put it in red color again. Over here, minus, it's very important, this formula. But the first term is zero again, because there's a constant at the top. And now I just need to copy the top. What is 0 0.5 times 35? 35 divided by 2? 17.5 times, good job, derivative of the denominator. What is derivative of 0 0.5 sine? <coughs> Amazing, 0 0.5 cosine t. And then what is derivative of cosine? Minus. Minus. Minus, amazing. That is the answer. How fast does the magnitude of the force changing when I'm dragging the cat who is super fat, 35 pounds. And then it's also ask you when does it equal to zero? When or with at what rate? So you set it equal to zero, solve for t. That is one of the last problems there. But it all end up to be using quotient rule. I can rewrite it if I want to, to something more beautiful. Square the denominator, just copy, and it's going to be minus 17.5 divided by 2. 8.25. 8.25, amazing. Cosine t minus minus gives you plus 17.5 sine t. And then you copy whatever was there. Don't be bothered by this. Type it carefully. If you get frustrated with typing, 
post it in the forum, probably you lost a parenthesis or something. I think that's the most frustrating part in this homework is just to type it in. But taking derivatives actually are not too bad. Try to do it this uh, weekend, review all the constants, power rule, derivative of sine, cosine, what is derivative of one over squared of x. You have to be good at this. Then you do this homework, and then you feel satisfied that you caught up to the material. If you're behind, use this weekend to catch up. Good job, people. I'll see you on Monday. Take care. Ask for questions before I run away. Like and subscribe.